Urban Renewal Authority has announced a new redevelopment project in Ma Tao Wai Road and Lok Shan Road in Kowloon City. Helen Chen with more. The project affects even number buildings from number 324 to number 354 on Ma Tao Wai Road. The buildings are more than 55 years old and range between three to nine stories. Starting today, the Urban Renewal Authority, or URA, will conduct a survey to determine the eligibility of affected persons for ex gratia allowances and rehousing. Notices were also posted to inform residents about visits and inspections. The site area covers over 22,800 square feet, and some 180 households and 20 business operators are expected to be affected. After the redevelopment, the site will provide more than 127,000 square feet of residential floor space. With about 230 units and an average area of 553 square feet for each unit. In addition, there will be more than 25,000 square feet of commercial space. Reconstruction is expected to be finished by 2033 to 2034. The project is adjacent to another URA project, the Kaupil Long Road Chikon Street Development Scheme. We have liked to use this project as a holistic site planning and urban design to link up the western part and eastern part of Marto Corp Road. And we would like to also extend the underground shopping street and potential connection to MTR station. Michelle Tong, general manager of the URA, said the project will involve around 110 properties. We will offer uh, acquisition uh, consideration to the owners and the uh, value will be based on the market value of the, at the time when we issue the acquisition offer. We will uh, uh, provide public housing rental unit for them to uh, relocate to the new flat. Following the commencement of the project, the URA will conduct briefing sessions and assign case officers to explain policies regarding the acquisition to affected households and business operators. Helen Chen, TVB News. Welcome back. The government announced the site of the North Lantau Hospital Hong Kong Infection Control Center will be released to facilitate the expansion work of the Asia World Expo. The facility was constructed and began operations in February 2021 as an isolation facility during the pandemic, having previously received more than 20,000 patients. It turned to standby mode in November last year, owing to a decline of COVID cases. Authorities said the facility's medical equipment and electronic devices will be allocated to the city's public hospitals. The government said it will release the remaining parts of the land in phases. Japan marked the 79th anniversary of the atomic bombing by the United States of its western city of Nagasaki on Friday, with the city mayor calling for the abolition of nuclear weapons. But the U.S. was absent from the ceremony as it is embroiled in a controversy involving Israel. The port city remains the last place in the world to have suffered an atomic bomb attack. Tracy Furness reports. The bell tolls at 11.02 a.m., the time the U.S. B-29 bomber Enola Gay dropped an atomic bomb on Nagasaki in 1945, killing around 39,000 people. A minute of silence was observed. Japan's Prime Minister Fumiko Kishida was in attendance. Kishida laid a wreath at the memorial, marking the 79th anniversary of the U.S. atomic bombing of the city, days before the end of World War II. The mayor of Nagasaki, Shiro Suzuki, pointed out that since the atomic bomb was dropped on the city, humans have abided by the rules of not using nuclear weapons until now. The mayor said nuclear weapons have nonetheless been developed and equipped with an intention to use them in wars, and as a result, nuclear capacities enhancement is escalating. 
Kashida said the road to achieving a world free of nuclear weapons is becoming more difficult with a divided international community over nuclear disarmament and the Russian threat. Israel's ambassador was not invited, with the Nagasaki mayor reportedly saying he wanted to avoid the risk of an unexpected situation. He said he wanted to hold a ceremony to mourn atomic bomb victims in a calm and solemn manner. The U.S. ambassador was also absent from the ceremony, but spoke from a Buddhist ceremony at a temple in Tokyo about the friendship Japan and the U.S. now have. He also commented on Nagasaki's decision not to invite Israel to the ceremony. There's a lesson for the world to take from the U.S.-Japan friendship. At one time, we were obviously the bitterest of foes. Today, we are the best of friends. So let me just say that I think it was a political decision, not one based on security, given the prime minister's in attendance. And to draw a moral equivalency between Russia and Israel, one country that invaded versus one country that was a victim of invasion, my attendance would uh, uh, respect that political judgment and political act. The Israeli ambassador had a message of peace. I came today to this beautiful Buddhist temple to pay respect to the Japanese people. I'm a Jew, and we are respecting and honoring all religions from all kinds of the globe, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Shinto, and others. And we think that we, the religions, can also serve as a bridge for peace, for coexistence, and for betterness of mankind. Tracy Furness, TVB News. An interim government for Bangladesh was sworn in on Thursday as the Hasina administration was overthrown after prolonged nationwide protests. Nobel Peace Prize laureate Mohammed Yunus was named as chief advisor, equivalent to prime minister, and formed a new cabinet. Danny Cho reports. During a brief ceremony at the presidential palace, Mohammed Yunus took charge of Bangladesh's interim government. He vowed to enforce law, prosecute all crimes, and heal the country that was convulsed by weeks of uprising that ended former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's rule. The 16 other members of the interim cabinet were mainly from civil society and include two of the student protest leaders. They were named as advisers instead of ministers and also took an oath in a ceremony. Yunus was awarded the 2006 Nobel Peace Prize for his work developing microcredit markets. He called for an end to all partisan violence, having returned to Dhaka from Paris on Thursday. His role as the chief advisor is the equivalent to a prime minister, and he is tasked with restoring peace and preparing for new elections. A spokesman of the Chinese foreign ministry said Beijing welcomed the formation of the new interim government. He stressed Beijing respects the development path independently chosen by the Bangladeshi people, while signaling China will strive to maintain and strengthen its ties with the South Asian nation. Danny Joe, TVB News. That's the news. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.